thinking is the hardest work there is, which is probably the reason why so few people actually engage in it. Now, Henry Ford said this about 100 years ago, and my experience is, is absolutely true. Thinking is very difficult. Now, I'm a business coach. I coach entrepreneurs and their leadership teams. So I get to work with these thinkers often, and it's a blast. I love it. Almost every day of the year, I'm talking to somebody who's created something out of nothing. And I was talking with one of my clients recently. He was telling me a story about New Year's Eve. And he had uh, gone to a hockey game on New Year's Eve, and he left his phone there. And he couldn't get back into the arena for three days. He was without his phone. You can you imagine being without your phone for three days? Right? We're tied to this thing. And he said it was the best three days of his life, which is interesting. He said he was able to think. He was able to work on his business. He was able to work on himself. He was able to sort of get disconnected from sort of the busyness and the day-to-day -day reality of everything that's going on. And it made me think about all the steps that I'm taking to try to stay in that thinking mode. What I'd like you to do is to visualize a ladder, if you would. A ladder, huge ladder from low to high. My business coach and mentor, Steve Chandler, calls it a ladder of consciousness. The bottom of the ladder, you could call it highly unconscious, is death. And just above that are feelings like guilt and shame and fear, busyness, stress, burden, uh, just lost in the day to day. And as you float up that ladder toward the top, it's feelings like love and spirit, creativity, innovation, uh, enthusiasm, humor, these kinds of things. And this ladder, if you use this metaphor, I want to refer back to it in my talk today. I've been on all parts of this ladder, as I'm sure many of you have. Uh, several years ago, before the role that I'm currently in as a business coach, I was on a plane almost every week, traveling across the country, doing talks, talking to entrepreneurs and their employees, um, and traveling and missing my kids' events often. Relationships were getting strained, which was you know, very stressful for me. I had a, a business partner, my former business partner. It was a very challenging relationship. He was an alcoholic, bipolar. He ended up taking his own life in 2014, which is a very sad story. So I've been down there. I've also been at the top. And I've been at the top for the last several years. It's been awesome. And I want to talk about a little folklore. These are people you've heard of, these thinkers. People like Isaac Newton. We know, folklore says, that he was sitting at the base of an apple tree when an apple fell, allegedly on his head. We don't know that, right? But it fell, and he started to develop this thought about gravity, called it gravitas, and it evolved into this theory of gravity, right? So he's a thinker sitting there. We know he didn't have a device with him. A second example of this, if you can picture a large man getting into a bathtub, and I'm sorry to give you that visualization, but that's kind of where I am right now. He sinks into this tub, and as he sinks in, the water rises, and he begins to think about buoyancy and displacement and volume, Archimedes, right? And he's thinking in this tub and develops this theory over a period of, of weeks and months into this wonderful theory we have today. So this thinking occurs when our mind is free. Oftentimes people say their best ideas occur to them in the shower, right? And you think about that. You're in there, you're thinking, your, your thoughts are flitting around, you're thinking about the past, you're thinking about the future, you're starting to make connections, you're thinking about the day, and you're planning. All these ideas are running through your mind as this warm water sort of seeps over you, and your, your mind has this sort of relaxed nature to be able to think. And what I've found is that if you think of life as a series of alternating periods of activity with periods of rest, like a sprint, rather than a marathon, it makes it much more enjoyable. How do you find these periods of rest? And so I've got three big ideas I want to share with you today that I've been able to work on to engage in my life to help me find those periods of rest. Hopefully, I'll inspire you to do the same. The first one is I want you to take time not to think. And this sounds ironic based on what I'm talking about already, but the daily ritual of finding 10 minutes a day to meditate, perhaps, to sit quietly on a couch, on a cushion, 
find a quiet spot where you won't be interrupted. You can do it as a guided meditation. Use an app like Headspace or Calm is the one I use. And the app will guide you through meditation. Or you can be unguided and just try to work your way through 10 or 15 minutes of complete focus on the present. The interesting thing I found about meditation as I've engaged in this is that when you sit there, your mind is going to want to find these thoughts and start to think about all these things that you should be doing other than sitting there not doing anything. And one of my other coaches had suggested that the great way to think about these thoughts that come flitting in and out of your head are to imagine you're sitting in a road watching a train go by and you're seeing all these rail cars go by. Those thoughts, each of those thoughts is like a rail car. And you can engage in it or you can let it pass by. And you want to let it pass by while you're meditating. You want to focus, ideally, on your breath. You'll be absolutely present when you think about the inhalation and the exhalation of your breath. It's very difficult to do, but it's incredibly clarifying. At the end of this 10 minutes, you feel rejuvenated. And my experience is if you can't find 10 minutes a day to do something like this, you probably need two hours. The second big idea I want to share with you is to take a clarity break. Now, these are weekly. Meditation is daily. And clarity breaks are the opposite of meditation. In meditation, you want to not think, try to avoid using your thoughts and to engage in your thoughts. With clarity break, what I suggest is find a coffee shop or find a quiet place. What I do is on Saturday mornings before anybody's awake, I go to my office. There's nobody there. But I have a bean bag there. And I sit in that bean bag and I look out the window, blank pad of paper and a pen, and just let your thoughts go. Just get them down. Get it out of your mind. It declutters. It declutters. Think about that ladder, right? If you have stress and worry, worry is misuse of the imagination, right? You have all that burden. You can get that out of your head, get that clutter down onto paper. Sometimes I make lists. Sometimes I'll think about my role as a husband or a father or a brother, a son, and think about all the different activities I want to engage in as, as that role. And it gives me ideas. I've made a bucket list. Uh, I've journaled. Oftentimes, I'll think about a topic, and I'll just write pages and pages, just stream of consciousness, write as much as I can, and get it out of my head. Again, one to two hours later, you'll have a timer on, but make sure your phone is set not to disturb you with phone calls and texts and that thing. You have to just, just silence that. Uh, you'll find yourself feeling like more confident. You'll feeling like, feeling like you're rising above that day-to-day -day busyness that keeps you bogged down. And it's an incredibly powerful feeling to be back in control. The element of creativity and innovation that can occur when you let your mind wander and get that down on paper feels really good. So clarity break is number two. The third big idea is to schedule your inspiration. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, for the last three years, my new business partner, uh, Tom, and I have gone on these clarity trips. And a clarity trip is one to two weeks per year travel somewhere, perhaps somewhere on your bucket list, and hike. We like to inject a bit of rigor, perhaps uh, climb a mountain or hike a trail, uh, but get away. And you have to schedule this. So I don't know if you're the same as me, but if you're like me, if you put something on your calendar, it typically is going to happen, right? So we, put the, we just put our 2018 trip on the calendar. 2017 is on the calendar as well. But back in 2014, we decided to go to Africa and climb Mount Kilimanjaro. And it was Tom's idea. And I said, hey, do you mind if I come along? And he said, absolutely. This sounds great. We just started our company in November of 13. And uh, so we set out for Tanzania. And we started at about 6,000 feet. And we hiked for about eight days, uh, gradually ascending to about 19,341 feet, approximately. If you've not done this, this is achievable by any of us. There's not a lot of ropes and carabiners and that kind of thing. It's just a hike. It really is just a hike. Uh, the last day is incredibly steep, uh, uh, getting to the summit. But on average, we uh, hiked or vertically climbed about 5,000 feet per day. And our maximum vertical in one day was 10,000 feet. You can imagine that. Altitude and those kinds of things. But what we got in this trip was we got to think about ideas that we wanted to to do with our company, new services, new products, working on the business, working on ourselves. No technology here. And we were able to develop this idea of putting on a conference. 
Because in my business coaching world, there are about 155 of us around the world, and we all have great clients. And we thought, what if we got all of our clients together to share with each other and learn and grow from each other? We thought, that's a great idea. This April of 17, our conference is happening. From an idea on Kilimanjaro to fruition, it's sold out, which is awesome. So we have 280 people coming to Atlanta to learn and grow from each other with a lot of breakout sessions and guest speakers. It's just phenomenal. So really exciting to see an idea go from just a discussion to tangible output. And you can see some of the inspiring views that we had. It's easy to let your mind just go into this creative place. If you're an entrepreneur or anybody that needs time to think, wonderful area to go to. Last year, I'm sorry, in 15, we decided to hike a portion of the Appalachian Trail. And so we looked at the whole trail. There's thousands of miles from Georgia up to, up to Maine and uh, decided to hike the Great Smoky Mountains between uh, North Carolina and Tennessee. There is a 75 or 76 mile stretch there. We hiked from north to south. So Tom's in Atlanta, I'm in Columbus. We drove down, dropped a car at the end, took a car to the beginning, and just started hiking, carrying all our stuff. And as we hiked, we started thinking about the business again and working on ourselves, working on the business. No technology again. And the idea we developed was we wanted to get more into the thought leadership realm around our business. And so we talked about blogging. We talked about books. And I will tell you that over the six days we hiked the 76 miles, it rained about seven of the days. It was, it was tough, but um, very much worth it. And this fall in September, Tom's got a book that's being published uh, which is really exciting. It's called What the Heck is EOS? So it's fun to see, again, that idea come to fruition. The last, you know, one more scene in uh, Appalachian Trail. I mean, I think this is just gorgeous. This is uh, achievable for anybody who is interested in hiking. The last place we went this past year in 16 was we wanted to go to Machu Picchu, so we decided to go to Peru and start about 75 miles west of Machu Picchu and over seven days end up at Machu Picchu. And it was un unbelievably gorgeous. And what we did was, we f at that time, the conference hadn't taken shape, the book hadn't taken shape, and we decided to evolve these ideas. So we really talked a lot about that. This was a much more strenuous uh, journey for us. Uh, average per day was 6,500 vertical feet. And it was, so it was like up and down and up and down. It was, it was incredibly rigorous. Um, max one day was 12,000 uh, feet, uh, uh, vertical feet. And the, Incline, if you've been on it, you know, the, the treadmills, you know, at one or two percent starts to get, you know, like you're going uphill. This was an average of about 12 percent incline. Really challenging, but incredibly beautiful. And you can see Machu Picchu there in the, in the distance uh, in the saddle of those mountains. So it allowed us, again, to be freer with our minds and our thinking and create and, and, create and innovate around uh, topics, ideas, new products, new services. My experience is that great leaders are disciplined enough to take the habit of quiet thinking time. So whether it's in a coffee shop or on a couch, whether you go travel internationally or just find a park nearby, I just encourage you to take a hike. Thank you.